In this video, you're gonna learn the essentials of building a professional, easy to use, and cost-effective lighting system for your church. We're gonna cover all of the specific fixtures you should be using for front lighting, back lighting, and atmospheric effects. We'll even talk about how to control the house lights in your worship center so you can extend the lighting design over your congregation. You'll see a professional lighting designer build simple yet amazing looks for worship and for a sermon within a few seconds. And make sure you watch this video to the end because we'll be sharing a cool device that you can use to control your house lights without touching your lighting console. And we'll just be sharing a ton of other pro tips that you won't find anywhere else. Between all the fixtures out there, there. You've got different types of hazers. You have different approaches to lighting design. It can feel pretty overwhelming. If that's you and you are new to church lighting design, you are in the right place. This video is brought to you by Pro Church Lights. They are your one-stop shop to church lighting products and services. I'm going to link the Pro Church Lights catalog down below this video. You can access the catalog for free and browse all of the various gear and fixtures we're going to be talking about in this video. Here we are at Tidal Creek Fellowship Church in South Carolina. I am joined here with Craig Derrica, founder of Pro Church Lights. And you can see as we look around the room, all sorts of wonderful new fixtures that Pro Church Lights just installed in this room. And I thought it'd be a great idea to have Craig and his team, we got Frank here on site with us as well today, walk us through their process of how they help churches improve lighting. So let's dive right in, Craig. Let's just start with Tidal Creek Fellowship story. What was it like when they first reached out to you and what were they struggling with? Yeah, absolutely. So when we first started talking with Tidal Creek here, they had the frustrations of just an old system. The system was installed 20 plus years ago. So they were just dealing with the layers and layers of maybe problems that arose over the years that never got fixed. Our lighting team back at Pro Church Lights offices started to develop a package that was able to take um, their frustrations and paint a picture of what new life could look like as far as lighting goes here at Tidal Creek. So the lighting design team, step one, was they developed some visual mock-ups. That's a service that every church that comes to the doors of Pro Church Lights, we walk people through. It allows the teams at the church and the leadership to see what lights are gonna look like in the space. That's step one. So Tidal Creek went through that process after they received those visuals, we did a Zoom call with them and we answered the questions they had, answered and um, helped them understand just the process and what it looked like from a budget perspective. And um, once, once the lighting package was developed, everything started moving forward to um, ship them the gear and get things underway. As we start walking down the path of that lighting package and what it looks like in the room, we take into consideration any existing equipment that can be utilized. In this case, everything was not able to be utilized because it was the sources of their frustration. Um, there were a few fixtures within the room that we were able to kind of repurpose, but for the most part, it's a, it's a complete overhaul. So during the design process, we took them through the key and primary areas and the prioritization. So that was important in case this needed to be a multi-year project, but they were able to do it all at once. But we prioritized from phase one to phase four, focusing on front wash first, backlight, atmospheric lights, and then house lights. So we showed them visuals of each one of those key areas. We assessed their current room and setup and rigging points. And then we drew out where things were gonna be. Within their room, their previous front wash was way too far back in the room. So we moved that forward to the correct positioning, which is that 45 degree target up and out from that pulpit position. Yeah, so if I'm standing at the pulpit here and I'm looking out into the room, I'm looking at a 45 degree point. So prior to the redesign by the lighting team at Pro Church Lights, the lights were way back in the room, just blinding pastor on stage, the worship team on stage. They were just getting hit right in the eyes. It was also washing out the background and it produced a very flat light, which just did not look great. It was just flat light. So reposition front wash to that 45 degree area 
and that was the number one most important thing that needed to happen in this space. So once front wash is established, that is priority one overall, we then look at backlight. So backlight is the light that's hitting me on the shoulders, sometimes known as hair light, kick light, backlight. So that is just giving me dimension. This is important for the camera, for their live stream here as well as for the worship environment in the room. It's just providing that added light that sets me off of the backdrop and is a fundamental to great lighting. What do you mean by atmospheric lights? So atmospheric is everything that we kind of see around us. So we have these pattern uh, beam movers right on the floor here. This would be atmospheric. Atmospheric is gonna be the light on the drape here, as well as these pixel sticks we have glowing in the background. So these are the elements that create our backdrop. It allows for the live stream to have some element behind us that's maybe out of focus. And it just, um, it, it gives us that nice backdrop that adds to the atmosphere. Plus during worship, programming creatively during big moments in worship songs can just really maximize those moments that we're creating on stage um, and in the space. And then you guys added a hazer to this setup as well? A hazer is used in this room and haze and these beam pattern style movements go together, right? Without haze, you wouldn't be able to see this beautiful beam in the air. So just like on a sunny day driving down the road, you know, through the clouds, you see that like light rays, that's the same effect happening here. And in order to see that, we need to introduce haze into the room to see that. You mean God uses haze in nature? Yes, absolutely. The most amazing hazer ever. All right, there, argument solved. Churches should use haze. So that pretty much takes care of all the lighting that needs to happen here on stage, but often overlooked in a church environment are the house lights. Tell us about the house lights and the theory that went into how you set these up. Yeah, so prior to what you see currently in the room, um, one was just a brightness issue. They did not have enough brightness spread throughout the room to be able to even read your Bible. Um, so that was one frustration they had as far as house lights. The second was they weren't able to change colors within the room. And that's something they wanted to do to be able to bring the colors that were going on stage into the congregation. The house lights that are currently now in the room that were installed are color changing fixtures. They're much higher intensity that was here before. And they're also just more quantity of fixtures which help that evenness issue that they were experiencing. So house lights are important. It kind of breaks that fourth wall. It takes what's going up on stage and it brings it into the congregation, which is important, right? We don't want to just be the platform here and you're there. We want to bring everyone together. And as simple as it sounds, just bringing the color into the room does just that. It, it's just a more immersive environment. So I wanted to pause there and re-emphasize the importance of those four steps. Don't just go buying a ton of random fixtures that you find on the internet. Make sure you assess your church's setup or a much easier way is to contact these guys. They can help you assess it, do that mock-up, and they can walk you through which of those four steps uh, are the, the greatest priority because it's going to look different for every single church. Front lights, kick lights, atmospheric lights, and then house lights. So next, what I would like to do is actually have Craig walk us through the specific fixtures that we are using for all four types of lights within this room. And you're going to get overwhelmed with lots of different model names and fixture names. So I'm going to go ahead and link down below the Pro Church Lights catalog that's going to list out all of the fixtures, all of their names and their specs. So you know exactly what we are covering in this video. So click that link below to download the catalog. So let's dive into the specific front light setup that you guys are using here at Tidal Creek. Yeah, absolutely. So our front wash here is made up of the Pro Wash Max. That is a Fresnel fixture, 200 watts, and that is providing the light to the front portion of the stage. Um, from left to right, that is that key area. So Pro Wash Max is that fixture. We then have a positioning that is past mid stage. And this is where usually the worship team would be and um, maybe bass or guitar. And this area we're using the Pro Wash Plus, which is a little bit smaller fixture because it's not a critical area on the stage, but they still need light back here. Instead of using the same fixture that's out front, we utilized a little smaller fixture, the Pro Wash Plus one because of a budget, keeping it within budget, as well as they just don't need that maximum power out here with the 200 watt LED fixture. So that's what makes up our front wash. 
I wanna show you this real quick. This is an area that churches forget to light and it's super important, right? So we're at a closing prayer or some point during the service, someone comes down here. We need to make sure we are lit in this space, right? So Frank, go ahead and kill this altar area light. So this area right here is just an area that is forgotten all the time. So if I was here, I'm preaching or maybe closing of the service and I come down here, guess what? All my live stream cameras just freaked out. I look like I'm off stage because I am off stage, but Frank, let's bring those back up and I'm lit. So this is a very important space to remember to light. Um, don't forget about this spot. So looking to the back of the stage here, we have our kick lights. And I actually see we have like two rows. We have like the purple ones here, uh, four of those, and then we have the white ones on top. And actually I'm seeing quite a few different uh, combinations of fixtures. So walk us through what we're looking at up there. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing when we're talking with churches, we ask them for their stage depth. That's important for us to know because we need to know how deep the stage is so we can accurately appoint fixtures to the various areas of the stage. So yes, we do have two rows here and that is because the stage is deeper and it needs that. So first and foremost, we prioritize backlight in that pulpit area. That is the number one area that we nail first. So with that, we have two pro kick fixtures dedicated to this area. They have barn doors on them, so we're able to frame things in. That's very important. We need to control our light. We don't want a very narrow beam fixture and we don't want something that's splashing the first couple of rows. So it's important that our wash is wide to cover this area with smooth light rather than creating hot spots um, on my body. And then we shut her down so that we're not blinding people in those first couple of rows. So pro kick are the fixtures right here. Also up there, we have the ADJ Stealth, and that is a moving head fixture. That's providing the other supplemental backlight to the forward part of the stage, and it also provides movement during worship. And um, we chose to do movers there just to fill that backlight area, but also just give that movement. And then the pro kicks are static, which at the pulpit, we just want a critical light that doesn't move. It takes out that possibility for movement intentionally. So it's one less thing to think about. It's simple and it's always there. And finally, then the back row, that's that backlight for the upstage area, that back part of the stage where bass, drums, guitars at. Those are bigger moving heads than the stealth zooms. That is our pro zoom. Um, at Pro Church Lights, we also have bigger models of those, and that just depends on the size of the stage in the room. Those are just providing a bigger punch, all variable width beams, so it's adjustable. Sizes that you can, you can do during your worship sets, and that's providing the added um, backlight to that upstage area. I like having the two rows of lights so that you could have a different uh, color backlight, maybe on the people on the front of the stage versus the people in the back of the yes, stage. Absolutely. And we could talk about maybe some of the complementary color options when we go back with Frank there and talk about some design stuff. If, if your church culture is like definitely not a great fit for Hayes, that's okay. We recommend then a wash style mover like what's up in the ceiling here, that Zoom Pro, something that has a big wide beam, those will do well without haze. But if you are looking at profile movers that create that pattern, that have that gobo look, then haze and those type of fixtures definitely go together. Also, just having haze in the room will dramatically change the look of your lights in the room. You know, is there a right and wrong? Absolutely not. But uh, you know, when you when you do get into haze and specific fixtures, you know, you're gonna want to take a moment and just make sure you're making the correct decisions with those pieces. Okay, so this is the Radiance by Ultratech. This is the number one hazer we recommend. One, it is budget friendly. It's not the cheapest hazer out there, and we don't recommend going out and buy the cheapest hazer out there. That's going to produce a very poor haze result and comment cards that are just not good. Let's avoid the cheapest hazers out there. It's not oil-based. This is a water-based hazer. Really no need to purchase an oil-based haze. And I know there's a lot of um, people out there that will argue that and this and that. We're not here to get into any of that. This is the hazer we recommend for churches. It's clean, it's water-based, it is affordable, and it is professional. The haze quality of this outputs is 
excellent. Um, we've done haste shootouts with other larger manufacturers, um, and, and we love the Radiance. So this is something we stock at Pro Church Lights in our warehouse. It's, it's our number one hazer for church environments. Yeah, so they have a fan here. It just helps get that um, haze pushed out into the room quicker. Haze is something that will take some experimentation as far as positioning of the hazer. And this is stuff we work with churches on looking at their room and we can usually steer churches on areas they should prioritize first to try it. It's something that's gonna take a little bit of time to dial in, but once you have it, it's very impactful. Probably a good idea to figure out how your church manages like smoke alarms and fire alarm systems too before you do a hazer? Absolutely. So the church here, Tidal Creek, they did need to have their alarm company come out and install a kill switch. And in order to do that, the alarm company and the church need to talk with the local fire marshal, just bring everyone up to speed. Communication is key. You're dealing with fire systems, local government. It's all possible, but yes, you cannot just buy a hazer and put it into a room and expect it to go well, especially if you have an alarm system um, active in your space. So this is the Focus Spot 5Z by ADJ. We found this as a very dependable fixture. It's super bright, it's LED, and it, it takes up a small footprint. So it's a great fixture for most church auditoriums. Again, it's LED, it has gobos in it, so that allows you to create those beautiful patterns within the air, and you can see the beam then when when you introduce haze. Without haze, we wouldn't be able to see this beam happening right here. So haze is important, and haze and, ha haze and profile movers go hand in hand. They work very well together. And maybe, Frank, could you show us some different things that this mover can do with like the moving gobos? So with these fixtures, you can do a rotation on it. These create those beautiful looks that are rotating within the air. You can do color changes, obviously. Frank, if you want to go ahead and do a couple color changes. You have color wheels in here that's doing that. Because of the price point of this, it's not color mixing. But once you have your colors, there's no need for that. You can definitely get color mixing fixtures. Once again, that just increases in price, meaning you need a large budget to do that. So for this church, um, this is a great fixture for this space. Space, uh, super bright in the room, allows them to accomplish those nice looks during worship, and especially with the hazer, that, that uh, just makes those big, big looks during worship. So along the back drape, these were the existing lights they did have, so we incorporated them. These are the ADJ hex bars. It's a nice fixture, it works well. They had it, so we incorporated it back into their space rather than um, retiring them. They were all functional, so um, we applied them to the background here. Wall wash is a position you should think about in your auditorium and your stage, and that just helps create that separation from the background. It's really easy to incorporate. You just you know set the fixture, hit the back wall, step back, make sure it's all even and space nicely and you can have a big effect fairly quickly. While we're on the topic of wall washes and on stage, do you have any recommendations about like stage color, like paint color, if people are uh, wanting to throw lights on there, what's going to work good or not? Yeah, absolutely. Straight black, we typically don't recommend, even though that's a very common color. Maybe just a couple steps up from straight black. It then is just not absorbing all of that light and it's able to reflect some back. So avoid straight black, bring it up a couple shades from black and that will give you just more pop from your lights on that back wall. White we try to avoid, but if you have white because that is just the the environment of your church, that's great. Just watch your intensities because that light will reflect so much. Sometimes you get a blown out background. So don't run your wall wash at 100%. Just dial it back to 50% and look at the cameras, look at it in the room so you're not blowing, um, blowing that area out. These are pixel sticks. Um, these are a product we developed. They are extremely versatile and you can get as creative as you want with them. That was the intent as we developed these. So these are LED tubes. You can run them in various channel modes. Um, you can even map video to them and do very elaborate effects with them by driving video to these tubes. So in this configuration, we have two tubes stacked together and they have an interlocking component so you can make them seamless. Also with all of our tubes, we include two different lenses. You get this domed lens that you see that's installed here, as well as a flat lens. So it just gives you more creative options as you're setting these up on your stage. In this configuration, you know, it's, it's just a vertical setup. These can go to infinity up into the ceiling if you wanted that huge linear line look. You can also rotate them horizontally or diagonally, position them in different configurations. That's the goal and intent. Everything here is driven by just a single cable and then daisy change, so power and data 
come over that one cable. It just allows for very easy setups and stage uh, reconfigurations. The stands you see here, uh, we made for this specific stage. When you buy pixel sticks from Pro Church Lights, we give you a catalog of DIY sets that you can utilize the pixel tubes with. All the hardware that we show you in this document, you can buy at your local hardware store. We give you step-by-step -step instructions so you can pick designs you like, get ideas immediately, and then just build it yourself, saving you tons of money and not having to engineer something from scratch. We don't, no one has time for that. So we've done it for you. It is included when you buy the sticks. Tell us about these house lights. The house lights here, they are color changing. That's the most dramatic effect you would see. Frank, why don't you go ahead and spin through a couple of colors just so you can see the extreme of the color changing house lights. It allows the volunteers here as they're programming to bring color into the congregation area during worship, extending that look that's happening on stage into the chairs. So the house lights here are another product Pro Church Lights has developed exclusively for houses of worship. Our goal is to provide churches dependable fixtures at a price point that makes sense for them and is backed by the support of the Pro Church Lights team. We are here um, to make sure your investment goes extremely far, right? Dollars are hard to come by in the church environment. We want to maximize that with you. So we've built fixtures that help you accomplish that from a price point from a service point. We want to make sure your investment is lasting years and years, decades ahead of you. Um, so these house lights are by Pro Church Lights. So those are all the specific fixtures being used in this space. Like I said, check out the Pro Church Lights catalog down below for the names and models for all of these specific fixtures. Okay, Craig, let's say I, I get your catalog and I want to go ahead and start purchasing lights. You guys maybe did a mock-up and gave me a good strategy for what we need to do in my church. And even though I'm a DIYer, I'm Jake from Churchfront, uh, you know, as you know, um, I like to DIY things, I'd still feel pretty overwhelmed. So I'm really excited about the hybrid kit that you guys have at Pro Church Lights. Uh, tell them about that service and, and how that all works and, and why you're offering it. The hybrid kit is the number one thing that we do at Pro Church Lights. What the hybrid kit is, is it's a kit that allows you to install your lights confidently, safely, and successfully using your own volunteer teams. We want to see churches leverage their volunteers, it's an excellent serving opportunity, as well as maximize their budget by installing the lights themselves but you're not alone through the process. So the hybrid kit gives you all of the resources that are gonna guide you in putting the whole puzzle together, right? We're gonna develop the lighting package together. You're gonna see visuals at the very beginning, but once you are then moving forward, our team goes to work on developing the hybrid manual, which is a custom manual specific to your stage, to your room, to your church, that shows you how to install your complete lighting system from start to finish. You also get all of the equipment delivered to you all of the pieces, there's no last minute running out and getting the little adapters for that fixture or the other connectors or extra links there. We go through all the legwork ahead of time to include the entire package so there's no surprises during the install process. Also during the process, our team is remotely available for you over FaceTime, Zoom, text, phone, whatever method you communicate best with or want to communicate over, our team is standing by ready to answer questions. So when you're in a lift or on a ladder or setting something up and you have a question, the team is ready to answer that so you can continue that install process, keep things moving. We also make sure everything is done safely. We're gonna talk about electric, we're gonna talk about rigging, and we're going to show you correct and professional and safe methods and equipment that you need to utilize in your space. We need to keep things safe and we need to install it correctly. So we dive into all that as well. We also do a pre-install call to answer any questions you have. So that way all your questions are answered as you move into the install as well as after it's installed, you're gonna get training from the Pro Church Lights team on your control system, as well as best lighting practices, how to be more efficient and creative in your programming, and you get that support as years go on, right? We're here for you, and that happens then post-install, and that is all a part of the hybrid install kit by Pro Church Lights. 
Craig and I connected a few months ago, and since then, we've referred so many of our own worship ministry school clients to him when it comes to doing any lighting upgrades. And one of my favorite parts about uh, what you guys offer, aside from the services, is actually just the products themselves and the customer support that comes with them. Maybe you guys have experienced bad customer support with other lighting manufacturers out there. It takes forever to get a light fixed, um, but you guys have built systems where like, if, if someone needs support with one of your fixtures, you can quickly get it fixed or swapped out, correct? Yeah, so we have a robust team that's focused on support that turns equipment around extremely quickly. The majority of items that come in for support or that need some type of tech support, one, it's gonna be answered on the phone call and gone through a little diagnosis. After that, if it's determined it does need a part replacement, we're turning around repairs within 48 to 72 hours once that unit arrives back to us. So extremely quick turnarounds, that is what we prioritize. We don't think there's an excuse to be down lights for a weekend. So our systems and supports teams are standing by to be sure those items are turned around quickly. When I look at your catalog, things look suspiciously budget friendly. How is that possible that your lights are such low cost? What's going on there? Yeah. Absolutely, love to unpack that. Pro Church Lights is DTC, and it's not direct to consumer, it's direct to church, right? One, we only service churches, and two, we sell directly to churches. We don't sell through integrators. We don't sell through online sales channels. All of those other elements take markup, which increases those prices. Our model is we sell direct to churches that eliminates the extra markups that are paid out to these other companies, so it saves you money. It also allows quicker support because you're dealing with the manufacturer. We are the manufacturer of our fixtures and we support and service our fixtures right in the United States. And that speeds up turnarounds, it keeps costs low, and it maximizes your budget. All right, we're back in the tech booth here and we've got our lighting designer, LD, Mr. Frank. Frank. Yo, what's up? What's your role on the Pro Church team? So I get the opportunity and the responsibility of getting to help train churches and also help a lot with the light design aspect and kind of a little bit of the R&D behind, you know, which softwares and platforms to use. So a lot of the technical support that you'll receive, I'll be a part of that as well, helping uh, churches like yourselves being able to utilize your platforms to their fullest capacity. What do we do when it comes to design? Do we just start messing around with colors, see what looks good, or like what's what's the approach that you guys take to that? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, just getting your lights rigged up and addressed and everything, it really, that's really truly the beginning of it. Uh, when it comes to making a, a really good, robust show file for yourself or your volunteer team to use at church, we highly suggest that you go about building your building blocks. So what I mean, what I mean by building blocks is, getting things built out such as fixture groups, which is a way where you can grab a certain selection of lights quickly and efficiently, uh, building out presets or palettes, depending on which platform you're using. Uh, what I mean by that is building out uh, pre-made, saved settings that you can recall very quickly and efficiently. So that can be things like intensity levels. So when pastor comes on stage, the, the brightness level set for camera and for iMag or whether, or perhaps it's color schemes or colors that work well for camera. So things that can be saved, that's something that we recommend you doing so that way you can work more efficiently and not having to reinvent the wheel every single time as you're programming. Another thing you can consider as well, I'm a big proponent of this as well, is building out and having a really good, um, a good library, if you will, of effect templates that you can use for quickly programming some really powerful looks. So um, this software is very generous where it has a lot of pre-made stuff. I'll, typically, a lot of line platforms will have pre-made stuff that you can utilize. I would also encourage, uh, figure out what fits your worship context, what fits your worship style, and save those as pre-made templates. So that way you can have some really powerful dynamic looks at, right at the get-go. Let's actually walk through some of those looks. We'll have Craig go on stage to be our subject and maybe walk us through you know, some example looks of like, okay, let's talk about what's the walk-in lighting maybe you would put together, then what's a worship lighting scene, and then what's a sermon lighting scene. So I'll let you kind of narrate that, and I'm just going to have my camera point at the stage so people can see what's going on here. Absolutely. I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to clear my screen, if you will, and I'm going to just start from scratch. So, okay, 
So I have a pretty cool look pulled up here, but now if I was to be building a, a walk-in look, I would want to try to have my lights set up in a way where it's, for one, uh, as people are walking into, into the space, it's bright enough for people to find their seats nicely and safely. Since our lights are color mixing out in the house here, I would choose to use one of my presets that has the color temperature set to a good level, a good color scheme. So this feels more uh, natural white. So that's a preset I built out specifically. So that way people can find their seats. Now my fixtures here on the floor, they're doing a really cool spinning effect. I actually, I'll, what I would do is I'll actually will turn this off. I'll save that for my, 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 my moments of worship here. Now we have our really cool sync design pieces, our pixel sticks. I like that brightness level. I might sneak it down a little bit and just have them just kind of have a nice little glow to it. So that way I have somewhere to go. So similarly, like when you audio engineers are mixing, you want to leave yourself some headroom. Same thing with lighting. You want to try to leave yourself some headroom so you can have your lights go somewhere in terms of brightness levels. So let's go ahead and let's sneak it down a little bit. So for me, for the walk-in, I typically like to have a little bit more of a subtle, more minimal look. And this way, I'll have a lot of room to grow and, and create some really powerful, worshipful looks. Let's talk about uh, the welcome. So for here, now if I, have my, if I did my due diligence to build out my intensity levels, or if I know what they are, I can have, as pastor comes on stage, I can simply bring up our stage wash, our front wash, okay? So you'll see here, Craig's walking up on stage to do a quick hello and greet the congregation. Very good. So you can do this a couple ways. You can program, program this in as a queue in your queue list, or you can organically bring it up on your council if you have a fade or dedicated to your stage wash. Both are wonderful methods, work totally fine. Now let's talk about worship. Moving on from moving into the worship part here, I oftentimes try to have my color schemes match with my motion backgrounds for ProPresenter. Also, if you use a different uh, presentation software, it's the same concept. Try to have your video content match your lighting so that way everything feels uniform and it feels like it's an extension of each other. Now, if I were to do a, a say, purple and blue heavy uh, motion background, I will use lights that complement that. So let's go ahead and let's start building a worship look. Let's go ahead and let's make sure I have the right amount of front light for my worship team. So I'm bringing this up organically just for this demonstration. So it's good love, there's good coverage. Now, since I have the ability to color mix my house lights, I want to be able to extend and, or rather, I want to be able to break the fourth wall and I want everything to be able to feel like it's one experience. So I'm actually gonna use my, my purple preset to change my house lights. And I might actually even dial back the intensity so that way it feels a little more intimate. I'm not a very good singer, so dimming the house lights helps me feel a little more brave to, mm -hmm. to belt out a little bit more. So now let's go ahead and let's add in some nice color. So I'm using my color presets to help get me where I need to go quickly and efficiently. Looks very nice. So I'm bringing up some more of my of my extra row of, of moving headlights here. Let's go ahead and do a nice blue here. Let's do this with my kick lights. So that way, the worship leader, you see how Craig on the stage, he has this really nice backlight happening. Looks great. Now my scenic design pieces here, let's go ahead and add some, add a color variation. My wall lights here, I like that blue. I think I'll go ahead and increase it a little bit. Now for my my moving headlights here, the floor. I can do a very nice, nice subtle backlight on him. So I have these strategically at the moment, tilt it up slightly so that way it'll avoid the eyes of those in the congregation. Any lower, I'm gonna get into people's eyes. So I wanna make sure I'm able to highlight just the, the, the backs of those leading worship. So to me, this is a really beautiful, worshipful look. This could be a starting place. You could add more cues if you would like as well to have your lights, uh, lights be an extension of worship as well. But this by itself, in my opinion, is a really beautiful look that can stand by itself.
I approve. Thumbs up. Ooh. Great work. <laughs> what would you do for like a sermon? How would you change this? At Protrits Lights, we are huge proponents for helping people hear the word clearly and for the message to be to be to not be a distract uh, be distracted. So our philosophy is we like to have our house lights at a level that's bright enough for people to easily read their paper Bibles or, or analog Bibles, if you want to call them that. Now for the things happening on stage, I want to make sure that my brightness level on my stage lighting for, for, for faces and, and, and skin tones, I want to make sure that the brightness level is high enough that the camera that's being used for online stream is getting what it needs. I also want the space, I want the pastor to be lit in a way that feels comfortable and he's visible from, from the congregation as well. Now from here, I oftentimes like to try to use less saturated color so that way things on camera look as nice as possible. So I will do a lot of like cyans or lighter colors, whites as well. So for my kick lights dedicated for, for Craig, I'm gonna have it be a white. I'm gonna roll back the brightness level so that way things try to help prevent any blow, blowing out, if you will. The scene design pieces here, I might do something like this. Wall lights, I might roll back a little bit. Now the now this this can be this is completely subjective, but the lights on the floor here, if I turn up the brightness level, this is a lot for the sermon look. So if I am going to consider utilizing these, I'll have these I'll have these backed out pretty significantly. So there's like just that effect, or I can also consider purely just having it off. So I might actually choose to try to have it on very low. I'll slow down the gobo spin as well, so it's not, in, it's not super fast or distracting. So there's a slight turn there. And this is how I would create a sermon look. So now this will look great on camera. It also looks very nice and crisp in person. So when you're doing lighting for the sermon, this is arguably the most important lighting scene you're gonna do during your entire weekend. So you wanna make sure that this is as, as bright, lit, and crisp as possible. Uh, Frank, while we're on the topic of lighting design, can you talk about color? Because you were able to put together some good looks, you know, the blues and purples, but what are some uh, quick tips you have for people trying to pick different colors or complementary colors for worship? So for me, again, I'm a big advocate, and I know for us as a company, we, we also try to like encourage people to try to utilize video backgrounds as an asset for their lighting design. So if you're picking, if you have some really great looking motion backgrounds, like quick way, a, a simple hack for you is if you have a cool background, try to pick out one to two colors out of it and utilize that with your lighting. For me, that's oftentimes like the, the um, go-to method I do a lot of times, but other than that, I like also, as a second method, I like to try to utilize and kind of think about and dissect and, 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 you, and be very intentional about the song that's being, that's being sung. I, sometimes like if it's like a song that's deep and passionate, I'll choose to use uh, colors such as orange or for like even reds potentially. Or if it's a song that's singing a lot about like God's majesty and, and how he's a king, I, I oftentimes will look, uh, Oftentimes we'll try to utilize colors like such as purple, like for royalty. So it's not a hard or fast rule. When it comes to picking out colors, I try to just be intentional about what that color can potentially communicate and also what the worship song is communicating as well. So I try to utilize lighting as a tool to help worship be a holistic experience where everything is working together in tandem versus like one's pulling and while one's pushing, it's all one uh, thing together. So another thought that for my line designer friends out there, I uh, would highly encourage you, so keep it simple. So we're big advocates at Protrus Lights of trying to utilize lighting in a way that's, that's subtle but incredibly impactful as well. So one great way you can do that is try to keep your lighting programming color schemes to one to two colors maximum. 
Now, when you're doing that, consider using colors that work and complement each other well. Once you get into utilizing three to four to or even more colors, it can feel very busy and it can feel very disjointed. So when we're doing lighting, we want lighting to be, be almost a story you're telling. So when you start introducing more colors and things appear to be just very like sporadic and all over the place, it can communicate something that you might not want to communicate. So try to utilize only one to two colors is our recommendation for light programming. Let's go ahead and demo some of this to the viewers. Go ahead and throw together a two color complimentary look. Absolutely, okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab certain selections of lights here and I will use that as my, my first color. So I'll grab these lights here and I'll grab these lights here and then I will use, let's do, let's do a nice pink here. That looks really neat. Now for this, I oftentimes like using whites. Whites can look really nice with this. White is a really great color to throw into a lighting design. It looks really nice, very beautiful, okay? Another color that you can consider using in my opinion, I think that looks really nice, is you can consider using cyans as well. So let's grab our color schemes here, grab our, our fixtures, and let's do, a, let's do a cyan. Let's have this be a little bit like that. And let's, let's throw in something a little different. Let's try something a little different. And I will actually do do an orange, I think it feels nice. Yeah. Try that. Another color, color combo that I, that I personally have been using a lot, and I think it looks very fresh and very new and clean, is I'm a big fan of sea foam. Huh. Now sea foam, it's almost, it's almost hugging the line. Let's grab these, let's grab. It's almost hugging the line of blue and green, I think it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I do like that. Usually I don't like greens at all because yes. they just look kind of like green goblin or sickly. Yes. But that sea foam, that's a nice little hack to make it look great. Yeah, again, we don't see, I don't see sea foam being utilized all over the place. So I think this is something that you can pull out for a nice airy, very, very nice, um, it makes me think, it makes me feel of just air and breath. Uh, there's a worship song called uh, Breathe that I love to use this color scheme with because for me as, a, as, a, as I'm worshiping, as I'm running lights, I like to, I like to um, just imagine like the breath of God breathing out on his people and, and, and changing their lives. So. And this is where it's handy to have those fixtures that can actually mix colors where the profiles there couldn't match the sea foam, yes. right? Because those ones only have certain locked in colors they can yes. do. That is correct. Yeah. So as you see, I'm, I'm limited to what I can utilize, unfortunately. So for here, I strategically picked out and chose to use white. White looks very nice with many colors. Kind of looks like a pack of Trident gum or something like that. Fresh breath, there fresh we go. Breath. That's that fresh, fresh breath you're talking breath. about. Look at that nice blue look I've got going on here with these house lights. So I like hanging out with these guys because they help me think about things that we often forget about as worship and production leaders in a church setting. And two cool things I want to talk about that they installed in this room. Uh, the first one is this handy little wall panel that they installed. So check this out. So let's say I'm coming in on some weeknight at the church. Maybe I'm part of some men's Bible study that's going on and it's using the worship space. And I come in and all the lights are blue, but we don't want blue lights. What's going on? There are, uh, you know, disorganized worship production director just, just left everything on and I got to figure this out myself. Instead of going to the complicated lighting console, as the volunteer uh, for the men's group at the church, I can just go to this wall panel and I'm gonna select the wall button here because right now it's on console control. So I'll hit wall and then I'll make sure it's on preset one. So I'll hit that and there we go. We have all of the normal house lights on. And then, oh, but what if we need some stage lights? 
I think if I hit another preset number, yep, the front lights just turned on the stage. So now without having to touch that lighting console in the tech booth, I was able to turn on the house lights and then turn on some stage lights and I can just toggle those on or off. That's pretty cool. So this preset, so this preset includes both the house lights and stage and this one's just the house lights. So even if it's just like the cleaning crew in your church, they can turn on the house lights. You guys get the point. It makes it very, very simple for someone to control the lights in the room, even if they're not an LD. And this is very unique to a church context because we have professionals or vol trained volunteers in our tech booths, but we also have people who don't know anything about the lights and don't want to know anything about the lighting console who need to turn lights on and off. Is there anything else that they need to know about this wall panel? Like, how's it, how's it doing what it's doing? Yeah, absolutely. So to save the presets, you first need to design your look within your lighting software. So that is foremost. It doesn't replace a lighting console from that standpoint. So create your look. Literally press the button on the head unit that's located maybe in the rack in the booth to save which number you're saving that preset to. And that's it. Then you just come back here. And maybe I call it up on preset three. And now we have some kick lights. Um, if I go to preset four, it's a different color kick light, um, you know, different house light color. So these scenes can be saved in minute or seconds um, to your panel. A lot of questions we get is like, well, how do we keep it tamper proof? Make sure someone doesn't bump into it. One positioning, you know, make sure it's a little higher so people don't bump into it. But to lock it, I can simply hit wall again. And now if I come here and press these other buttons, a scene won't accidentally change. Same thing with console. When it's in console mode, it is locked out. So if I hit these buttons, nothing's gonna change. So it just is that extra little element that keeps people from accidentally bumping it um, or touching it and changing a scene. What's the hardware involved here? How's that being powered? How's the data getting back and forth? To install the panel, you're gonna cut a little hole in the wall and it's all driven by a Cat5 cable. One cable, not data and power. Everything's coming down one wire. So the wire just connects in here. It's a simple RJ45 connection at the end. It goes into the booth where there is a main unit and that's where you're recording your presets. And that is just in line between the console and the lights is that main unit. And it's as simple as that from an install perspective. Once again, guys, like everything else, this is in the Pro Church Lights catalog. Click the link below to check it out. I'll probably have a separate link for this wall panel. You can pick one up today. So while we're talking about underrated features people need in their lighting design system, specifically for a church, uh, what's this next thing that you want to show us that you installed here? Yeah, okay, so this switch right here controls the power to our lights. So when I, s when I flip this switch, I've disconnected power from our auditorium lights and our front wash. If I turn it on, power comes back. Okay, so this switch is disconnecting power from our house lights and our stage lights. Why this is important. One, if our fixtures are energized or seeing power all the time, it's gonna shorten the life of our fixtures. Two, they're gonna be consuming power 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hour, you get it, right? Like, it's good to disconnect power from our fixtures to maximize the life of our fixtures and reduce energy costs. So that's exactly what this switch is doing. This is controlling a relay box by the breaker panel that is then powering down our lights and bringing them back up without having to go back to a breaker panel and like flip a bunch of breakers. We don't wanna do that because this is our auditorium lights. The entire system here is DMX based, so it's a little different setup. Um, but once that master switch is hit and powers back up, I can then come to my wall panel call up some different presets in the room. And it's as simple as that. When we're done with the room at the end of the day, flip the switch, walk out the door, our, our fixtures are not powered any longer. I wanna say a huge thank you to Pro Church Lights and Craig and Frank for making this video possible and showing us the work that they did at Tidal Creek Church in South Carolina. Check out the link below this video to download the Pro Church Lights catalog and to be up to date with the latest offerings they have when it comes to the various fixtures and accessories they sell. Also check out that hybrid package that Pro Church Lights offers where they can come alongside of you and remotely consult you through this process of installing or upgrading the lighting system at your church. Thanks so much for watching. Share and like this video if you found it helpful and you want to see more. And don't don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.